Today we're going to go over the 2A review worksheet. Um, it's going to be the first part um, of a definitely multi-part series. So we're going to start with problem one and we're going to see how far we're going to get. Problem number one is 4n minus 8 is less than negative 12n plus 8. Now we're going to focus on using PEMDAS backwards. So if you see right here, this is PEMDAS backwards. In order to solve, you're going to go backwards. So you're going to start looking for subtraction. And the arrows mean that if I want to get rid of subtraction, I use addition. Then I look for addition, then division, then the multiplication, then exponents. If I want to get rid of an exponent, I use a, a square root sign or a radical. And that's as simple as it's going to be. So. The first thing I have to do is, I have to remember, with, with PEMDAS backwards, I, it's for one variable. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get these ends on the same side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 12 ends to both sides. Right. I like keep my ends lined up so I don't end up making mistakes with like terms because I can only add the ends up with the ends. So I get 16n, nothing happened to this 8, so it stays the same. It stays less than, it turns into, that cancels out, so you're just left with plus 8. You don't even need the plus sign there. Now I can do, now I can do PEMDAS backwards. So I add 8 to both sides, because that gets rid of subtraction. That leaves me with 16n is less than 16. 16n means 16 times n, so it's multiplication. To get rid of multiplication, you divide. So your final answer is n is less than 1. The only other thing you could you need to do is you need to graph it. Alright, you make your number line. Alright, I have an open dot at 1 because there is no bar. And then I shade to the left because those are the numbers less than 1. 0 is less than 1. All this is, this means there's an infinite amount of answers. That finishes number one. All right, number two. It's just like number one, except it's basically two problems in one. So I'm going to focus on one problem at a time. I'm going to focus on 4x minus 6 is less than 22. And then I'm going to get an answer for x. And then I'm going to do 5x is greater than 25. Both of these, I'm going to use PEMDAS backwards, just like we did in the last problem. So... I look at number, the first part of number two. I see that there's subtraction. I get rid of that subtraction. With addition. So I get 4x is less than 28. 4 times x is multiplication. I get rid of that with division. So I get x is less than 7. Over here I have 5x. That's multiplication. So I divide x is greater than 5. I make my number line. Put all of these numbers on here. You don't really need all of them. You really just need 5 and 7. They're both are, they both are open circles because there is no bar. And then it's bigger than 5, so I know it's this way. That second dot's like a, like a stop sign. And then it's less than 7. So I continue to shade less than 7. I notice that it shades everything in between. So that's your solution. That's it for number 2. So in number 3, we have the absolute value. That's what those two bars mean. The absolute value of 3 halves x minus 4 equals 6. So the hint sheet you're going to want to look at is right here where it says that the absolute value means you write it's two equations um, and the only difference is you write it twice the first time you write it exactly the same the second time you write it where you change the answer to be negative you change nothing inside the bars the only thing you change is whatever's after the equal sign and then this little part right here with the inequalities means if you have one inequality, when you change the sign of an inequality, you have to change. Yet when you change the answer to the inequality, you have to flip the sign. Right. So <clears throat> number three, 
First thing we do is we write it twice. We say 3 halves x minus 4 equals 6. And then you write it again, 3 halves x minus 4 equals minus 6. Now we just have two different answers. You're both going to follow PEMDAS backwards. I add 4 to both sides. I get 3 halves x equals 10. Um, you can either you can divide both sides by 3 halves if you just look at that as a as a number being multiplied by x, but I like to look at it as division, so I multiply by 2 thirds, the reciprocal. 10 times 2 is 20, 20 over 3, so x is equal to 20 thirds. Or a lot of us are probably going to use the calculator and it's going to say 6 and 2 thirds. I personally prefer the improper fraction, but um, 20, 6 and 2 thirds isn't wrong. Now look, you notice when we do this, we're going to follow the same steps again. So I add 4 to both sides. I get 3 halves x is equal to negative 2. And I still multiply by 2 thirds again. Now I get x is equal to negative 4 thirds. Or a lot of us might have used the calculator and got negative 1 and 1 third. Right? Both of those are valid answers. So Notice we had two equations, two answers. That's it for number three. All right, number four. Four, we have the absolute value of seven minus x is less than or equal to 14. So we're going to follow the same idea where if I see the absolute value bars, I'm going to write it twice. And make sure that because these are the inequalities here, you're going to flip those signs the second time you write it. So I'm going to write it twice. The first time I write it, I write it exactly the way I see it. 7 minus x less than or equal to 14. The only difference was I just didn't write the bars. Now the second time I write it, 7 minus x, I write negative 14. And because I flipped that sign on the... After, after the inequality, I have to flip the inequality itself. All right. Now I'm just going to go through. A lot of people are going to make the mistake that this 7 here, it's a positive 7. So you, it is kind of more, it is more addition than they're going to get surprised by that it's negative sign and they're going to try to add 7 to both sides. But you actually have to subtract 7 from both sides. I get the opposite of x is less than or equal to 7. Now, they're gonna, some people are going to forget that's a negative 1 there. You have to remember it's a negative 1, so you divide by negative 1. You get x is greater than or equal to negative 7. Do the same thing here. I subtract 7 from both sides. Get minus x is greater than or equal to minus 21. Because remember, we flip that inequality. And then I divide by a negative 1. And whenever I divide by negative, I have to flip the inequality. That's why it's x is less than or equal to positive 21. Right. And now when I make my line, it's one line, I have negative 7. I'll put 0 on there too just because I like having 0 on my line. 21. Now they're closed dots because those bars underneath the inequality, they include, it means equal to, so they include the point as well. It's bigger than negative 7, it's less than or equal to 21, so I shade in the middle because 0 is a good test point for, for both of them. Is 0 bigger than 7? Yep. Is 7, is 0 less than 20, less than or equal to 21? Yep. So it, it works out really well. Alright, number 5. It's a system of equations. Which means we've got to find a solution. We've got to find a number for x and a number for y that makes both of these true at the same exact time. There's two ways to do this. We're going to use substitution. Okay, that means that I have to hope one of my variables are already by themselves. And I notice here that this x variable is already by itself. So that means I'm going to rewrite the top equation. But instead of writing this x, I'm going to write y plus 3. That gives me one equation with one variable. And I can now solve. So I distribute the negative 8. Notice I distribute the negative sign with that 8 to both the y and the 3. That's why I get minus 8y minus 24. Still haven't done any solving yet. I'm just, I'm just simplifying. 
I combine like terms, I get minus 6y minus 24 equals to minus 18. Now I can add 24 to both sides. I get minus 6y equals minus 24. I'm sorry. Negative 18 and 24 is 6. I divide both sides by negative 6. So I get y is equal to negative 1. Right. Now, this y is equal to negative 1. I'm going to plug it in right here to that y. It doesn't matter which one you pick. You'll get the same answer. I have x is equal to negative 1 plus 3. So I get x is equal to 2. I have an answer for x. I have an answer for y. I'm going to write it as an ordered pair to negative 1. So that's my solution. Okay. Moving on. All right. Number 6 is 6x minus 10y equals 34. And remember, it's another system of equations, so I also have a second equation, minus 6x plus 14y equals minus 22. Because I see these x's, everything's already lined up for me, and I see that the x's have matching coefficients with opposite signs, I know I'm going to use elimination. All that means is I'm going to add vertically. And when I add vertically, things are going to disappear. 6x and negative 6x, those cancel out. Right? So I don't need those. But negative 10y and 14y turns into 4y. And 34 minus, plus negative 22 is a positive 12. Now I divide both sides by 4. I get y is equal to 3. Now I'm going to take this y and I'm going to plug it into, it doesn't matter, one of those other equations. You can pick either one. I'll pick the top one. So I say 6x minus 10. Instead of y, I write 3 equals 34. If you use the bottom one, you're going to get my, the same answer as long as you do everything right. 6x minus 30 equals 34. I add 30 to both sides. Let's just back to PEMDAS backwards. I get 6x equals 64. I divide both sides by 6. I get x is equal to 64 over 6, or 32 thirds, or a lot of us might use the calculator and put 10 and 2 thirds. I would prefer this 10 and 2 thirds versus 10.6 because that's, a, that's, a, that's an estimation. 10 and 2 thirds is the exact answer. That's how you do number 6. Number seven, you have x squared plus 3x minus 54 equals zero. You can either use the quadratic formula. I'm going to solve it by factoring. So remember, when we solve by factoring, the first thing is we have to make sure it's equal to zero. This one is equal to zero. So then I'm going to write the factors of the first term. How do I get the x squared? Well, x and x. How do I get 54? There's a bunch of ways to get negative 54. I'm going to have 1 and negative 54. I could have 2 and negative 27. I could have 3 and negative 18. I could have 6 and negative 9. Or I could have the opposite of those as well. I could have negative 1 and positive 54. I add myself. I ask, because this is a 1, I can do the little shortcut where I add up the middle. That's a negative 53. That's negative 25, that's negative 15, that's negative 3, because I just added those together. Notice that negative 3 is very close to what I want here in the middle. So if I had negative 6 and positive 9, it would actually give me the right answer. So I can factor this into x minus 6, x plus 9 equals 0. 
Since it's equal to zero, I can say each set of parentheses equals zero, so x minus six equals zero, or x plus nine equals zero. Now I have two really simple equations to solve, so I add six to both sides. I get x is equal to six. I subtract nine from both sides. I get x is equal to negative nine. Notice, those are your two answers. If you use the quadratic formula, you get the same exact answer. All right, so number eight, we have x squared plus eight x plus 25 equals zero. Remember this is x, is this only, this is our formula for the quadratic formula. x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a. Remember that's only if x is equal to zero. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say a is equal to one because there's a, technically there's a one in front of the x squared b is equal to 8, and c is equal to 25. Now I'm going to plug it in. x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times 1 times 25 all over 2a. That's one of the common mistakes I see is somebody doesn't make the fraction go over everything. Another thing that you should notice is I just, the first thing I did is I just replaced any, anywhere I saw a letter, I put open set of parentheses and then put the number inside of it. So now I'm just going to start simplifying. x is equal to the opposite of 8 plus or minus inside this radical. All this I just put right in my calculator. 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 25, that's 64 minus 100. It's the square root of negative 36 all over 2. Now, remember, we're not allowed to have a negative inside the radical. So the next step that happens is I have negative 8 plus or minus i. That makes that radical, or that negative sign, leave the radical. And then it's just the square root of 36, which is just 6 all over 2. And now I notice that the 2 can go into the 6 and into the negative 8. If that happens, where it can be divi divided into both, you can, in fact, divide it. The reason it has to go into both is because that's a plus or minus there. So I divide negative 8 by 2, and I get negative 4. 6i divided by 2 is just 3i, so it's negative 4 plus or minus 3i. So your final answer is x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus 3i. All right, number nine. Number nine only has one x, one variable. It only has x squared. So I'm going to use PEMDAS backwards. All right? But if you wanted to use the quadratic formula, you could say a is equal to 10. And it's really easy to find c, because remember, c is always a constant. But b, you don't see. b is 0. So if you're going to use the quadratic formula, that's what you need right there. I'm not going to use the quadratic formula. I think it's really too long. It's going to be much easier just to use PEMDAS backwards. So I'm going to use PEMDAS backwards. Backwards. So I'm going to subtract 300 from both sides. I get 10x squared equals minus 300. I divide by 10, divide by 10. I get x squared equals negative 30. I take the square root of both sides, the square root of both sides. The only problem with using PEMDAS backwards is most people forget that a plus or minus shows up after this step. This makes the plus or minus show up. All right, so it's plus or minus negative 30 inside the radical. Once again, there's a negative inside the radical. That's not allowed. So your final answer is x is equal to, notice the plus or minus already happened, so the i is in front of the plus or minus 30. If x could be broken down, you would break it down, or I mean if 30 could be broken down into the perfect squares, you would, but it can't, so it's done. All right, number 10, we're once again going to use the quadratic formula. 
But the first thing I have to realize is that it has to be equal to 0. So I add 24 to both sides. I end up with x, 8x squared plus 48x plus 24 equals 0. Now, personally, many of us probably did not do this, but I'm going to divide every single thing by 8 because I want to deal with the smallest numbers possible. This is going to make my life easier. If you don't do this stuff, you still get the same answer. It just makes breaking down your radical during the quadratic formula a little bit harder. So I have x squared because 8 divided by 8 is 1. 48 divided by 8 is 6. So that becomes 6x. 24 divided by 8 is 3. Right. Now I find a to be 1, b to be 6, and c to be 3. Plug in the quadratic formula, x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So I get x is equal to minus 6 plus or minus. Put all this in my calculator, I get 36 minus 12, so it's just 24 all over 2. Remember, 24 can be broken down into 8 or um, into 4 times 6. 4 is perfect, so it comes out as 2. So this becomes x equals minus 6 plus or minus. 2 radical 6 all over 2. So this 2 can go into the 2 in front of the radical and the negative 6, so I divide them both at x is equal to minus 3 plus or minus radical 6, and that's my final answer. Moving on. All right, number 11. Once again, there's one variable, so I'm going to use PEMDAS backwards. I subtract 130 from both sides. I get 6x squared equals negative 144. I take the square root of both sides. I get 6x equals plus or minus. There's a negative inside that radical, so it turns into an i. Square root of 144 is just 12, so it's 12i. I divide both sides by 6, I get x is equal to plus or minus 2i. Okay. Moving on. 12. 12 means the quadratic formula again. So I just say x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, where a is negative 1, b is negative 4, and c is 6. So I say negative 4 there, negative 4 there, um, negative 1 there, 6, negative 1 there. And x is equal to the opposite of a negative is a positive. In here I have 16 plus 24. So that's just 40 inside the radical, all over negative 2. One of the most common mistakes I see is somebody tries to do divide 40 and negative 2. You're not allowed to do that. Both need to be need to be in a radical to divide. So before I do anything, I have to break down 40 into perfect numbers. So I'm going to say 4 and 10, because 4 is perfect. 
So, 4 comes out as 2, so my answer turns into 4 plus or minus 2 radical 10 all over negative 2. If you gave me that answer, I would take that for full credit, but you can say that 2 goes into both, so your final answer can change just so your final answer can become x equals 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2 plus or minus 2 over negative 2, the 2's cancel, so it would just be radical 10. Both are acceptable. Right. That finishes 12. Alright, 13 once again has one variable. So we're going to use PEMDAS backwards. Remember, that's this is like a plus 4, so I have to subtract 4 from both sides first. I get minus 2x squared equals 8. And you have to remember, I cannot take the square root of both sides. When I follow PEMDAS backwards, multiplication comes before an exponent. So I actually have to divide by negative 2 first. Get x squared equals negative 4. Then I'm allowed, once, once x squared is all by itself, then I can square root both sides. I get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 4. The negative turns into i, 4 is perfect, so I get x is equal to plus or minus 2i. That finishes this, and it's actually going to finish the video. We'll do the rest of the night.